Yo, what's up guys, it's your boy Snow and we are back again for another brand new adventure up video. And today, I'm going to teach you guys how to build your max level warrior. Let's go! As you can see guys, if you have seen me on one of my streams, my strength haven't changed that much even after the trading update came out because as much as I wanted to, I kinda want to keep my intellect gems so I can continue to provide you guys some mage builds and tips in the future. Besides, I do not really have problems on any maps currently so expect that I wouldn't have an OP character. Since I'm doing this for all of you, maybe you guys would show me as well how cold you are by freezing that like button and joining our snow squad by smashing that subscribe button for more awesome adventure up videos. Just like on my mage video, we're gonna start this talking about the pros and the cons of being a warrior first. Let's start with its pros. Warriors 2 main DPS skills are both burst damage, meaning warriors have an advantage against tanky mobs since you can take them down easily compared to mages. Warriors also got a bit of an edge when it comes to moving speed because you can get additional boost as one of its passive on the skill tree meaning you can reach some destinations of the map a little bit faster. The cons however is even though the warrior's damage is burst and it deals a lot of damage, the cooldowns of your skills is really slow. You really have to know how to use and utilize those skills and not just spam casting them when you are in a run. Also, since warriors mainly rely on strength and healing scales with your intellect stats, healing effect is close to none when it comes to warriors. Your main goal as a warrior is to kill them as fast as possible using those burst damage skills before they hit and kill you. Not having enough strength and level of strength gems would really be a nightmare if you were taking the warrior path and will surely force you to run for your life most of the time. With all those being said for warrior gems, strength and fortitude are your go-to gems. Going glass cannon and putting all strength gems is obviously very risky especially if you do not have max level equipments yet but of course, it is not impossible to go glass if you have high level gems enough to clear group of mobs in one skill cycle. Let's say you have unlocked all the sockets on your equipment and have 24 gem sockets at the moment. I suggest putting 2 to 6 fortitude gems, depending on the level of your fortitude gems by the way, and let the rest be strength depending on how your runs are going. As you can see at the moment, I'm using 2 fortitude gems with all strengths for the remaining sockets and it's just enough for me. In fact, I can even go with one but for now I'm using two just like what you can see in the level of my fortitude gems they're pretty high level 7 and level 9 already consider fortitude as your friend since shield skill is the only survival skill that you would have on your runs and shield scales with your fortitude stats let's now go to our skill tree build since our focus as a warrior is to deal as much damage as possible we are going to max precision to boost our hit stats so that our burst damage skills will have lesser chance to miss and just be wasted. Quickness would also be a good passive to give yourself a chance to not receive any damage from your enemies at all. We'll also max dash so we can use it if we are grinding an easier map and also for diamond parkour challenge. For the second tier, Fury is a must since it amplifies our attack damage which is your left click and as a warrior if you are not left clicking then I suggest that you should just switch to mage because warrior deals a lot of damage on its normal attacks and basically it's a big part of your general damage per second. We'll also max the fire blade because this is a very good buff skill to further improve your damage per second even you're just using your normal attack. Cyclone skill on the other hand is good but too risky to use on higher level map because you have to finish its animation before casting another skill which would leave yourself very very vulnerable on your enemy's attacks. For the third tier, max the stomp since it is one of warrior's main skill due to its good offensive and defensive help. This skill can confuse enemies totally stopping them for 2 seconds allowing you to deal more damage to them without taking any on yourself or just use it to run for your life. We'll also max the critical knowledge to further increase our DPS. We're not going to get the poison skill because it just doesn't fit any warrior combo since its damage is divided to 6 sticks and you need to face your enemies while doing so. Not mentioning the fact that it doesn't even say what stats amplifies its damage so yeah, it's just not worth it. 
To be honest, I really think that this skill should not be here in the first place but just in the mage because come on man, you were a warrior, why would you spray poison to your enemy? For the next tier, physical specialist is the most important warrior passive skill since it increases your general strength for 4% which is obviously so good. Rock strike is also a good burst damage skill and even though you need 4 points to max it and you need to face your enemies to damage them, its hitbox is good enough to cover most groups and its damage is also decent. Berserk passive is on the other hand arguably can be a good replacement for the Fireblade buff but I just prefer using Fireblade because Berserk's animation makes your character drastically slow its movement while being casted compared to the Fireblade which doesn't really affect your movement at all. For the highest tier of course we're gonna max our Heroic Slam. Even though its cooldown is 24 seconds, it is worth it since it deals tens of thousands of damage depending on your strength gem levels. We're also gonna max the lightweight because who doesn't want a faster walking speed? Like, come on. Rage passive on the other hand depends on your current build. Right now, I'm only using 242 gems so I usually find myself bleeding especially when I am doing Tomb of Asian max. With that being said, getting this passive is worth it for me since I can utilize its additional damage boost whenever my HP is down to 30%. If you have a lot of fortitude gems or currently using some support set pieces and not really bleeding that much on your runs, I suggest to save those points for other skills. Let's now go to support skill tab. Of course, we shouldn't miss getting the shield since it's our only defensive skill in our combo together with swiftness to get that sweet attack speed boost. For the second tier, maxing vitality is a must because come on, we do not have heals. We should make our warrior as tanky as possible. We're just going to add 2 points on heal instead of intimidation since we really don't want those mobs to be more aggressive ending up killing us. For the third tier, there's no really useful skill on this tier so just put enough points to unlock the next tier because in the fourth tier we have to get the support specialist which amplifies our fortitude which would also make the shield effect better and of course will improve our general HP and defense. All of your excess points should go to the rejuvenation because it improves the auto self heal of your characters. Take note that while you still have the effect of your shield skills it gives your character more time to heal itself up. Now that we're done with our build, let's now try it on the battlefield and test it on the max Tomb of Asian. The skill combo that I'm using right now consists of 2 to 3 groups when it comes to the timing of when I use and cast them. Having our cooldowns long means that we have to make sure that we're not overkilling mob groups otherwise you will be forced to dive into groups with not enough skill to cast and die or just stopping waiting for your skills to cool down. If you have enough damage, casting your fire blade then rock strike plus left click should be enough. If not, then you have to cast your stomp first then rock strike then fire blade just like what I'm doing when I'm facing scorpions. Casting your stomp first would help you to survive longer since your enemies are literally stopping due to its confused effect. Only use your heroic slam on large group of mobs and if possible, it is best to use it after you casted your stomp since its animation is usually long enough for the mobs to deal a lot of damage and worse, even kill you. Guys, as you have seen, we literally just cruised smoothly along the max TOA map and I know many of you would say that my gem level is the reason why it is effective and it is actually the point. Playing with your strength and fortitude gems depending on how your runs are going is the key to unlock your warrior's full potential. If this video helped you, then leave this video a thumbs up and as always, thank you so much for watching. Stay cold. Peace out. Hey you. Yes you! Check out my other latest video. Just click these suggested videos and if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button for more awesome videos. 
Stay cold, Snow Squad!